All right, so welcome to the first section of the civil FE exam review. Um, this section is the mathematics and statistics section. And today we're going to be focusing specifically on um, analytic geometry. And according to the reference handbook, it says that we have roughly eight to 12 um, questions that is gonna be given for the mathematics section. So let's go ahead and dive into this, this first question. So it says the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals 25. What is the length of the radius? All right, so what, are, what information are we given? Well, we're, we're given the equation of a circle. Okay, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the length of the radius. Okay, are there any formulas that we need? Uh, yes. So first thing that I would do is a search in uh, my main, my reference handbook. I would search circle and see if I can find the equation of a circle. And it's the first thing that comes up. So let's zoom into here. So it says, uh, shows us a circle. And it basically says that the center of that circle, um, and you can see this kind of diagram um, that it gives us, where we have um, H, which is the center, K is the other point. So you got H here and K. So H is the X, K is the Y point. Um, and then we have R, which is the radius. So it says um, from this that the square root of X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared gives us R, R radius, All right? So good, that's all great information. Um, but how, how can we take our formula and mimic it, right? So basically we know that um, in our particular formula for the circle, we have X minus zero squared plus Y minus zero squared um, is equal to r squared. And so what I did was said, okay, for our equation, we don't have the square root, right? For our equation, we just have x squared plus y squared equals 25. The reason why I put zero in because our h, it just lets from this equation, you know that our H is zero because it doesn't show up and our Y, I mean, our K is zero. All right, so, um, so we just substitute those. So how do we get um, our answer, right? So if we know that R squared is our 25, All right, what is R? R equals the square root of 25, which equals five. So this one says, um, perform the indicated function evaluations for F of X is equal to three minus five X minus two X squared for F, of four. So what are we given? We're given 
a function all right and um we're at and the function in this case is this f of x equals 3 minus 5x minus 2x squared and we're told to find uh, the function for f of 4 and so what uh, what does that mean right and so what it means is is for this particular function when x equals 4 what do we get for our answer for this function so are there any formulas needed no we're given the formula that we'll need right in the question all right so what is our answer so we're good we're just going to plug four in uh everywhere that we see a x so f of four for this particular function is equal to three minus five times four because there's an x minus two times four squared and i put it in parentheses to kind of separate things all right so um i get negative 32 minus 20 three all right and once i put this into my calculator i get negative 49. so my answer is in fact d i hope that you're enjoying this video i just wanted to drop in and say if you're looking to pass your civil fd exam within the next 90 days then you definitely want to check out the course that I've created. The video that you're currently watching gives you just a glimpse of what is in the course and I have made it test taker proof. And what that means is, is no matter if you've been out of school for a while or you just have trouble with some of the engineering concepts, if you study this material that is in the course, it will help you to pass within the next 90 days. There are also full practice exams. Yes, 110 question practice exams, along with review guides and study schedule templates to help you pass. And these, re these are resources that I have created for you. So if you wanna check out any of those, just head down in the description box below and check them out now. Now to stay up to date on any new videos that I drop, whether it is more practice problems like in this video, or if you want advice and some extra tips to help you pass your civil FE exam, you're gonna wanna make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so that you know exactly when I post. All right. So this one, number one says, um, determine the angle between the two vectors. Uh, vector V is one, two, three, four, and vector W, is zero, negative one, four, and negative two. All right, so what are we given? We're given two vectors, u and v. Okay, um, or u and w, I'm sorry. All right, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find theta or the angle between the vectors. Are there any formulas that we need? Well, I don't know how to um, do this. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to the vector section in the manual and see if I can find anything. So I'm just gonna do a quick control find vector. Operations, maybe. No. Vectors. All right. 
So it, it, when I search vectors, I get a mathematics section. And um, one of the things that comes up is the uh, dot product. And uh, it is given by a dot B is equal to a magnitude B magnitude cosine theta, uh, which is equal to again, the dot product. So what is that? Um, theta, right? Well, theta, if we look at our diagram is the angle between the two vectors here. Zoom in here. So yes, this is theta. So that's what it's asking for. Um, and because I have prior knowledge on this, then of course I'm going to be able to navigate through this manual and know where to go. But if you go through vectors and having this practice, then you're going to know what to do to be able to solve this. Right? So, um, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Um, and also you can note that you can use either the dot product to solve for the angle, or you could use the cross product to solve for the angle. You would just use instead of, um, cosine, you would use sine. So that's just some background. Let's go ahead and do the problem. So first we just want to have this whole this. So uh, the formula that we need is going to be uh, a magnitude b magnitude and then uh, cosine theta which equals b dot a. All right, so instead of A and B, we need to swap these with uh, our V and W. So it's my mistake, but just for the sake of this problem, it would just be um, V magnitude times W magnitude cosine theta is equal to W dot V. All right. So what is V magnitude? V magnitude is equal to um, one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared all over the square root of that. And I I feel like they have this in the handbook somewhere, um, but you will need, let, let's see, let's do a quick search. Uh, so yeah, um, like your resultant, can see here it's always going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared so in this case it was one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared and then all over the square root so how many ever variables you have um in your vector that's what it that's what it is so let's go back to vectors Okay. 
All right. So I now have uh, my V magnitude, which is equal to the square root of 30. What's my W magnitude? Well, that is equal to this, the square root of zero squared times negative one squared and it's plus plus four squared plus a negative two squared. So I'll have the square root and I get for my W square root of 21. All right, so what is V? So we have uh, our V, we have our W. We don't know what cosine theta is. This is the question mark. That's what we're trying to find. And then we just need W dot V. So what is W dot V? Um, w dot V or how they highlighted in is uh, a X times B X times C X times D X, whatever it may be, plus a Y times B Y plus a Z times B Z. So same thing, um, with our equation. So we could say W dot V or V dot W. I'm going to say um, w dot v for this scenario so w dot v is equal to what is uh, the x values that we need to be multiplying so um, what is our w x well w x is zero what is our uh, v x it's times one, All right? And then plus, what are our y's? Negative one times two plus four times three plus a negative two times a four. And that, after you add all those up, you should get two. All right. So next thing is um, we now have these values. So uh, now it's just solving, right? Or plugging and chugging, right? So to get our theta, we're going to say, and I'll just walk you through this, what this typically looks like. So it's going to be, you have V, you have your W. And you have the magnitude of both of those. Cosine theta, which is equal to W dot V. All right, so we're going to divide both sides by magnitude of V and W. So we'll just have cosine theta is equal to W dot V all over the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, how do we get theta alone? Well, we take the inverse of cosine. So we say theta is equal to cosine inverse of negative one of all of this stuff. So W dot V all over the magnitude of V times the magnitude of W. All right, now we already solved for all this stuff, so now it's just plug and chug, all right? So which is equal to the cosine of negative one times, what's our W dot V? We got two 
divide it by the magnitude of um, V, which was the square root of 30 times, these are brackets, okay, and then times what is the magnitude of W, this is square root of 21. So two over all of that. And keep in mind this value, we want to put it in um, all underneath or inside of the, in the inverse cosine. So when I put all this information in, I get 1.4912. Radians. An important thing to note, whatever type of calculator that you have, you want to make sure that you input this and make sure that you're in radians. If you're in degrees, you're going to get a like a 20 degrees, 30 degrees, or a lot higher than, than the radian value. So this answer is going to be D. All right, so number one says, so you want to rent a one bedroom apartment in Dallas, Texas next year. The mean monthly rent for a random sample of 60 apartments advertised on apartments.com is $1,000. Assume a population standard deviation of $200. Uh, construct a 95% confidence interval. All right, so um, let's let's take a look at what we're given first and foremost. So we are given um, the mean which is a thousand dollars. We're also given the number of apartments, which is 60. Uh, we're given um, the d standard deviation, I'm just gonna put SD, uh, that is $200. And so um, those are all the givens. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the 95% confidence interval. All right. Okay, so what is a confidence interval? Um, so basically a confidence interval is a range. And so that's what we're trying to find that, and we're trying to find uh, or be 95% confident that an apartment within um, this sample is going to range um, pretty much near the thousand dollar mark, plus or minus uh, two hundred, right? Or the standard standard deviation is could be anywhere from you know two hundred dollars off from that that mean. So um, what we want to do is uh, determine those boundaries, right? And so um, how do we start this problem, right? So I don't know too much about confidence intervals. So normally when I don't know something, um, I try to find some formulas that involve it. So I'm just gonna do a, con a control search and do confidence interval. All right, one thing comes up. So one thing that you want to note, okay, so this is the first thing that comes up is a confidence interval for an intercept. So this is kind of confusing, all right? 
a lot of symbols. All right. Um, and you need to know those symbols. So it'd be nice if they told me what those symbols meant. So we got uh, A. So I start to look at my variables, right? And see what I'm given, the information that I'm given. Um, N is gonna be my number of samples, which is 60. SXX, what's MSE? Uh, sometimes you'll have to scroll up to see what some of this stuff even means, right? So based on them not even sharing with me what any of that means. Okay. So I think I'm getting a little bit warmer, right? Uh, this one says, this, I'm going to type in confidence interval. Uh, sample distributions, confidence interval for mean of a normal distribution. So um, I do know that we do, the standard deviation is known. And so um, X bar represents my um, mean. Um, and then Z alpha divided by two. I don't know what that is. This symbol represents the standard deviation. And then N is the number of samples. So basically, it seems like I have a good amount of variables that I can work with, right? And so this is why being able to navigate through this, woo, is gonna be super important and understanding what is what okay. so i don't know what z alpha divided by two is here so can i determine that well base because i know um i know i'm, I'm f very familiar with this chart and this manual so um Z alpha corresponds to the appropriate probability under the normal probability curve for given z, uh, z variable. So um, what is Z variable? Well, Z variable is the 95%. So you got an 80% 80 confidence interval. Um, and so we're gonna be looking at this 95% confidence interval. So we need to use uh, Z alpha divided by two is equal to 1.9 to six. That's the value we need for that. So, um, if you didn't know what some of this stuff, these symbols mean, all right, here's a perfect place to go to start seeing some of this stuff. So Z variable is the standard normal Z score. Uh, test statistic, this symbol stands for standard deviation. Uh, your population mean, your hypothesized mean, mean, right? That X bar that we saw, N is the sample size. So um, once we go back to our our one, then what are our bounds, right? What is, what are our bounds? So we have X bar, which is equal to the main, which is equal to a thousand. We have a uh, standard deviation, which is equal to um, 
what is our standard deviation? 200. And then uh, for variables, we have our Z, A divided by two, that's 1.96. And our N is equal to 60. So now we can find um, the bound, the lower bound of this um, amount of rent or price of rent. So let's uh, solve. So X bar minus Z times the mean over the square root of n, which equals two, and this is our lower bound. So, so we're saying our mean, which is a thousand, uh, minus the uh, 1.96 times, 200 divided by the square root of 60. And you should get for that 949.39. Okay. And so that's our lower bound. So we're 95% um, sure that our rent um, we're 95 percent confident that our rent will be between 949 dollars and um, our upper bound is going to be here since we know our standard deviation um, is going to be the same thing but it's going to be plus so x bar plus z alpha divided by two times standard deviation over the square root of n. And that's going to equal 1,000 plus 1.96 times 200 divided by the square root of 60. And that is going to give us 1050.61. One. 1050.6, right? So um, our answer is going to be A. And for saving time purposes, if you get one of the bounds, and it matches up then you don't have to solve for that upper bound because especially if it's not the same because if we would have saw that it was 949 right we could have got rid of uh b c and d from this so i hope that you're enjoying this video i just wanted to drop in and say if you're looking to pass your civil fd exam within the next 90 days then you definitely want to check out the course that I've created. The video that you're currently watching gives you just a glimpse of what is in the course and I have made it test taker proof. And what that means is, is no matter if you've been out of school for a while or you just have trouble with some of the engineering concepts, if you study this material that is in the course, it will help you to pass within the next 90 days. There are also full practice exams. Yes, 110 question practice exams, along with review guides and study schedule templates to help you pass. And these, re these are resources that I have created for you. So if you wanna check out any of those, just head down in the description box below and check them out now. Now to stay up to date on any new videos that I drop, whether it is more practice problems like in this video or if you want advice and some extra tips to help you pass your civil FE exam, you're going to want to make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications so that you know exactly when I post 
And if you want to check out the next video, you can here.